on the ship. Doing it. We're on the gangway and there's a pretty long line to actually get on, I'm sure, because they're doing a little show. Disney Magic, please welcome aboard the Thompson family! What's up everyone? We are aboard the Disney Magic. We're here. So we drove down this morning. We ran Princess yesterday in Walt Disney World, drove down to Miami, and we just got on the ship, did all of our uh, kind of important things, the welcome aboard, we did our muster drill and all of that. So now we are going to Cabana's to get some lunch because we are hungry. And then we'll kind of come back and talk about embarkation and all of that fun stuff. But we're here, you can see Miami over there. And we are so excited. What do you mean? Well, I heard the little mute from Telefeature that he changed the map so. Hey, how you doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, can I get some of the beef actually? And then, can I get some of the mac and cheese and some of the chicken? Oh. And then some of the orzo. Price? Yes, please. Uh, sure. Thank you. All right, so we are at our room. Our key to the work cards are in the little fish extender. I'm gonna pull that out there. Seven five zero zero, and here we go. All right, when you walk in, we have the split bathroom, little shelf up there. 
And then on this side, we have the other sink, along with the uh, shower. And then this is our room. It is a, uh, it's an ocean view. I don't remember what the category is. You can see we have the bed on the left side here. And then we have the seat, little table, and the TV, and all the storage options. Let's see, we got the one breakfast card, still no uh, stationery in here, and then we have one porthole here, it's pretty decent size, yeah. oh, fridge, But this is, this is our home for the next couple days. So we got more drawers and an actual closet here. In the closet you have your safe. Of course your life jackets. Oh, lights turn on in here when you open the door. And then another full side to the closet. So lots of space to put our bags and such. So we're going to kind of get settled in now. And all our luggage is already out here. Terminal C, this was where we boarded. And then that's the Terminal C parking, but they parked us at G, which is not the next parking garage building you can see, but it's way down on the, like almost around the corner basically by the Virgin Voyages building, uh, which is probably like your best indication because it's like kind of a cool, like newest looking building of these here. But yeah, it's like all the way down. It's like three parking garages down basically. So that was a little confusing this morning. So we are in O'Gills. Uh, we kind of just ended up down here for the safety drill and then stayed down here and got some drinks. And we're kind of chilling here for a little bit. I think after that, we're actually gonna go and do laundry because we brought all of our dirty stuff uh, from Princess Weekend. So we're gonna go and get that started and then probably go to the Cove and get some coffee. Because we are tired. Uh, we did wake up at like 5.30 to get here from Walt Disney World. I actually woke up at 4 because I'm still on race weekend schedule. That'll do it too. <laughs> but I think that's our plan for now. We're gonna finish these and then go do laundry, which is something we haven't done before yeah, on the ship. I couldn't remember if we had it. No. Okay. Let's do it.
So, basically a little laundry room. And you scan your key to the world card over here and like put credits on it. Basically it's $3 to wash, $3 to dry. Then they have a uh, soap and such. Then all these machines. All right, we just got back to the room with our laundry and uh, we met our stateroom steward who was doing the room. Yep, Ed from the <laughs> Philippines who's doing a couple rooms down. He was very nice. And they got some like actual branded chocolate. It's still the Dove brand. But you can see it's got the ship on it and it says Sweet Dreams there. We can get that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you can see on the back, it's just, it's still Dove chocolate. Then we got our little swan friend here. Katie's folding some laundry. <laughs> All right. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Going by trivia um, here. It's not All right, so. We are on our way to dinner. We have Rapo er, Rapunzel's Royal Table tonight. We're going through the main lobby now. So. Oh, who's out? Okay, stop. Get some image or er, video of the princesses over on the staircase. But now we're going to Rapunzel's. I'm excited. New place for us. New menu. Thank you. Good evening, hello. How are you doing? Is that like this? Yeah, you can.
So I wanted to do a quick talk about kind of our embarkation experience and getting down here to Miami. So we left from Walt Disney World this morning, probably about what, 6.30 or so? About 6.30. Yep, and we drove down here all the way. Uh, we basically took the turnpike all the way down until it turns back into 95, which is pretty much right before Miami. It was like about a, I think it was predicted for us at a three hour and 45 minute drive. It kept... Moving Changing. between like 3.30 and 3.50. Yeah, and a couple times it was like, oh, we're going to divert you to 95. And then it was like, oh, no, never mind. So <laughs> we took the turnpike all the way down here. Uh, that worked fine for us. We did stop, I think, at exit 109. It was the Palm Beach exit, mm -hmm. and it's also like the PGA exit. Yep. Uh, it's where all of that was. And if you get off that exit, the next right has a 7-Eleven and a nice Publix there. Uh, so you can stop, use the bathroom, get gas, all that stuff. And it's very easy to get back onto the turnpike as well. Uh, yep. You just basically turn left and make another left and you're going back in the right direction again. Yep. And on that same, um, in that same shopping center with the Publix is a Starbucks and a few other like quick restaurants, tropical smoothies. So if you're driving down and need to stop for like a breakfast or a lunch or early lunch or something, it's, I think that's a really good spot to stop. Yeah, it's like a nice area, too. Like, yeah. it's a nice gas station. From that point, depending on traffic, you're about two hours from Miami. Pretty much the whole trip went smooth up until, like, that last 30 minutes. Basically, once you get into the Miami area, it's a little bit chaotic. Uh, once you get off the turnpike and it turns into 95, you can either stay on 95 or use the 95 Expressway. Um, our GPS had us going on the Expressway, but it would have been just as quick to have been not on the expressway but it is a lot of crazy it's like six lanes in total a lot of people crossing over there's exits on the left exit on, exits on the right uh so it is a little bit uh stressful especially if you don't prefer to drive like us yep. <laughs> and then getting into the terminal was a little bit frustrating it is kind of cool like once you get off of all the craziness of 95 you go over a bridge and you can see uh, where the port is and you can see all the ships lined up and it's on your right and you can, with the water there and then you go down under a tunnel and when you come back out of that tunnel uh, you're right there and all the ships are on your left they had lots of like different spots kind of blocked off uh, so you know they had you saying oh you need to be in the far left lane and then all of a sudden that lane they had coned off so you had to get back over in a lane uh, we got to the ship and basically like missed the porters the first time and had to do a loop to get to the porters uh, we got that off and you could do that and park as early as you needed they weren't checking your port arrival until you were actually going into the terminal so we did that and then they said parking was at parking lot G which was like on the other end of basically the port it was over by the Virgin Voyages terminal so the parking garage was parking garage G which was basically at the other end compared to where the Disney uh, Terminal C was. So we actually missed it the first time around, just thinking that we had driven by it. Um, but what I did was I just pulled it up in the map and it showed me exactly where it was. So it's, it's at the other end by Virgin Voyages. You go in there, you take a ticket and park, and then Disney actually has basically like charter buses to drive you back to their, uh, their terminal. Once we figured out where it was, super easy and fairly convenient. Uh, we had already dropped off our luggage, but it was super easy. So we took that bus back. We got off our port arrival time. It was the perfect timing. It was 11.15. Yeah. We stepped off the bus at 11.15. It was a little confusing because there were no Disney people out there kind of telling you what to do. But some other guests told us, oh, they're calling port arrival time. They're on 11.15 right now. So we, you know went right into the building um everyone else was just kind of waiting outside the building yeah there wasn't any like benches or anything it was kind of just people trying to find whatever shade they could stand in yeah so i think disney's intention is for you to get to that building at your port arrival time so all these people who are early i don't think disney really wanted them standing there but they didn't do anything about it so uh, once you get inside the building they scan your port arrival sheet and you go through security, very easy process, uh, very pleasant workers, uh, port workers doing that. Um, after you go through security, they direct you over to the testing. This is the first time we've had to do testing to go on a cruise. 
this part was probably the most chaotic part, I think, of getting onto the ship, or maybe the most crowded <laughs> in the room waiting for testing was like the longest queue. <laughs> I think the most crowded, they give you your test kit and then you can see the line snakes a little bit. It really wasn't that long. We waited, I think, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. which wasn't bad. Uh, but there's a lot of like things they want you to do and then things they don't want you to do. And they're all kind of just shouting it. And they're like, stay six feet apart as they're handing out tests and kind of like throwing people <laughs> into the queue. So I don't know. They just didn't really have it together there. Otherwise, testing was easy. Once we got to the like little area, they have kind of private sectionals there uh, so your family goes in and then there were two people there to help guide you through taking the test yep. they basically just give you the stick they say shove it up both your nostrils and then <laughs> well, they didn't say it like that they said swab each nostril five times very nicely yeah <laughs> gave it back to them they take it from there and then uh they send you uh to the waiting area yep um we waited about 15 minutes and then got our clear to sail it was really really quick yeah ours was very quick and it seemed like most people were going quick because the people who were sitting around us who like came in around the same time we did got them around the same time we did so they seemed to have this process going very well very smoothly after that we went through and did the actual check-in where they go and check your passport and scan all that and they said all right you're clear to go aboard uh, there was a little bit of a line in the gangway because they are still doing the welcome aboard show right when you enter with the 10 circles or however many are in this lobby i didn't count total time from arriving 11 15 to checking in and getting onto the gangway was just about an hour and then the gangway wait time was about another 20 minutes it really was the other longest part of our getting on the ship yep but everything went smoothly and went the way it was supposed to so um no complaints or anything that i find yeah. fault with <laughs> yeah no what uh, actual like embarkation process was honestly very easy today i was even easier than i thought it was going to be to be honest yeah. so that was good so we're just gonna wrap up our evening we finished eating at rapunzel's royal table we were supposed to do tequila tasting and I guess they accidentally overbooked tequila tasting. So we actually gave our spot to another couple who were trying to do it. Uh, we've done it before, so not a huge loss for us to miss it. We're kind of yeah. tired anyways. Yeah. Uh, Rapunzel Royal Table was all right. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't super enjoy the things you ordered, but the restaurant itself is really pretty and the it show is, is cute. And so, um, I think overall it's a, it's a good, I, I wouldn't skip it at least the first time you come, I would say. I actually enjoyed everything I ordered. I had the Maximus yeah. salad, which had some like pickled cucumbers, a carrot salad and a potato salad and some bib lettuce on top. It was very good. Nice and light and refreshing. And then I had, oh gosh, I think it was called the Tangled Pasta. Yeah. It's like a pesto angel hair with some scallops. Great. Loved it. <laughs> Yeah, I thought both of your options were good. For the appetizers, I did both the ravioli and then the uh, crispy shrimp. Uh, the shrimp was fine. It was a, like one real big piece of shrimp. So it was kind of just so big that like the shrimp flavor kind of just took over the whole like crispy aspect. But it was fine. It was decent. Uh, the ravioli was not good, to be honest. Like, it was, like, borderline cold, but you could tell it was supposed to be hot. And then I had the uh, potato soup, uh, and it had, like, so it had sausage bits in it. That was actually good. I enjoyed the soup. That was probably my favorite thing from the meal, actually. For my main, I got the... Prime rib. I got the prime rib. And that was actually decent as well. It was like a real big portion though. So at that point it was like, I was just full. <laughs> and it came with a twice baked potato. That was also pretty good as well. I was happy with that. And then dessert. Yep, I got the sweet bread in the little frying pan. Uh, that was just fine. I didn't eat the whole thing, uh, but the ice cream on it was good. Yeah, I had a bite of his and there was a flavor I couldn't identify that I did not love. Otherwise, I thought it was like a, a clever and unique dessert. And then I got the creme brulee cheesecake, um, which was okay. I, I think maybe I just don't like the flavors of creme brulee and cheesecake together. So I just ate the cheesecake part on the bottom. But you had a bite and you I said you really I did try hers it. and I liked hers a lot. Yeah, so I think that might have just been a me, me thing. So I would recommend getting that if you like those two things. <laughs> yeah. Overall, though, it's a cool restaurant, really cool theme. You know, mm -hmm. you have the show kind of in between everything happening. 
So I would definitely, like, go back and look forward to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so far, Sobe team seems great. I always love meeting them the first night, so it's good. The only other thing, I mean, we went around and, like, we're taking videos and pictures today, doing lots of walking around and exploring. Uh, spent some time at the Cove Cafe. We love the theme of this one. I've never heard anyone talk about the fact that it's this so one's different. themed a little bit different than all the other ships. Yeah, and I think all the ships have different themes, but the other ones are so similar to each other, it's not noticeable. But this one is, like, noticeably different, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, I think some of those just, like, quirky things that you find because this is the first ship. Uh, so I'm really enjoying our time on the Magic so far. Yeah. And then we did stop by the shop, and I got uh, the Marvel Day at Sea pin. Quite frankly, it probably could sell out. Maybe not, though. We'll see. But I wanted to make sure I got something Marvel. I usually tend to get a pin uh, from each of our cruises, so... And they don't ha seem to have a lot of Marvel Day at Sea merch. No. If, if what's in the store is all they have, it was, like, one rack of stuff, so... And it wasn't a lot. Like, there wasn't, like, shirts or anything I didn't see. Well, they, I know they had a couple of t-shirts because I saw them when we walked by, but they may have already been sold out when we when it actually opened and we went by, so... Yeah. Tomorrow's our castaway day. We really don't have, like, any crazy plans for tomorrow. I think we're going to film, like, an island tour and do, like, some stuff, like, on Instagram. Ride the bikes. We like doing the bikes. Yeah. We probably won't run because we just ran a half marathon yesterday. So I think we're going to save our running for the second castaway day. Yes. <laughs> That's going to do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, all of that fun. YouTube stuff, and we'll see you tomorrow for Castaway. Bye, guys.